If you want to remember the trig functions, here's a diagram to help keep things in your mind. Start with the unit circle, which is a circle with radius 1. Now imagine that we rotate the radius some angle theta. Then the vertical distance between the point on the circle and the x-axis is called the sine of theta, while the horizontal distance between the point and the y-axis is called the cosine of theta. This means that the point on the circle has coordinates cosine theta, sine theta. Notice that the complementary angle in the first quadrant to theta is pi over 2 minus theta, so the cosine of theta is really the sine of the complementary angle. That means that the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus theta. Now draw the line that is tangent to the circle at the point and perpendicular to the radius. Let's label the line segment D. Because these two pictured triangles are similar, that means that the ratios of the side lengths are equal, so that D over 1 must be equal to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. Therefore, the length of this new line segment must be the sine of theta over cosine theta, which we call the tangent of theta. We can use the same triangle similarity to compute the length of the hypotenuse of this new triangle to be 1 divided by the cosine of theta, which we then call the secant of theta. Now we perform a similar process, starting at the point on the circle and drawing a line perpendicular to the radius that connects to the y-axis with a length of d. Because the two pictured triangles are similar, we can see that d divided by 1 must equal cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Therefore, the length of the new line we drew must be cosine of theta divided by sine of theta, and we define this to be the cotangent of theta. Similarly, we can compute the length of the hypotenuse of this new triangle, using the similarity of triangles, to be 1 divided by the sine of theta, which we define to be the cosecant of theta. As we change the angle theta, we see that all of these values change as well. In fact, if we let theta be pi over 2, we see that tangent and secant are undefined at this point because those two lines don't intersect along the x-axis. Likewise, if we let theta vary all the way down to 0, we see a similar fact about the cosecant and the cotangent of 0. They are both undefined as well. We can get even more information from this diagram as we let theta vary. We see in particular that the sine function and the cosine function outputs must be between negative 1 and 1 as those lengths can't extend outside the unit circle, which has a radius of 1. And likewise, we see that the cosecant and the secant have absolute values that are greater than or equal to 1. And finally, we see that the tangent and the cotangent can take on any value between negative infinity and infinity as we rotate around the circle. Returning to our general diagram, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to gain more insight about the trig functions. From this original right triangle, we see that the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta must equal 1. From the right triangle created by the tangent and secant values, we get that 1 plus the tangent squared of theta must equal the secant squared of theta. And from the right triangle from the cotangent and cosecant values, we see that 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. It's interesting to note that all three of these identities are really just the same since they all come from triangle similarity. Also, notice that these two triangles pictured here really contain the same information, it's just one contains the information about the complementary angle. Those values are simply the sine, secant, and tangent of the complementary angle. The prefix co attached to all those words stands for complementary. What other trigonometric concepts can you visualize using this diagram as we let the angle vary, or as we simply let the angle be static representing a generic diagram? Can you find any other trig identities hiding in this picture? I hope that this diagram helps you make sense of the trigonometric functions, and maybe keep the ideas in your head a little bit easier.